Okay, so we're now on to the last hands-on. And this one is now going to add some extra hardware features now from the discovery board into our previous example, which was the number guessing game. So we're now going to turn it more into a real life application for a typical LoRa sensing node or moat. So the key learning features for this hands-on are pretty much the same. Uh, we're still going to look at the two callback functions, so we will have to change our um, parameters that are in our callback functions because the application is slightly different. We're still handling a data buffer of some sort, so this time it's a single element of temperature. We're going to continue using our software timer, but now we're going to use some of the extra hardware functions built into the LoRaWAN software stack, so some of the pre compiled libraries that we have inside the um, LoRaWAN stack for supporting additional hardware on the target device. So this time we're now going to turn our LoRa moat into a temperature sensor. So it's a real life application, it's going to measure temperature of wherever it is located uh, around the world. Rather than sending the random number as we did before, we're now sending a temperature value. And then we are going to compare that temperature value to a comfortable temperature value stored inside our gateway. And we'll either get a command to tell us to increase the temperature, decrease the temperature, or we've got the correct temperature set. So now we're going to change the moat measurements to go every 60 seconds so temperature is not normally a fast changing item so 60 seconds is quite reasonable for a temperature change and now we're going to let people know if we're above the threshold below the threshold or we are at the correct temperature so the leds will light up to blue to say it's too cold red to say it's too hot green to say we're at the correct temperature So if you look at the data sheet from the STM32L0 device, inside the ADC connected to channel 18, we have a temperature sensor integrated inside the silicon. So we've got two calibration values for that temperature, one done at 30 degrees C and one done up at 130 degrees C. And those are stored in system memory at final test in our factory. So we store these two calibration values. Then in the data sheet, you can see the average slope of millivolts per degree C. So all these parameters are used to calculate the value that we're getting into a degree C value, which we will then transmit across the LoRa network. So if we now look in the STM32L0XXHardware.C, we can see the routine for compute temperature, and we can see where our two calibrations are defined as well. So all these parameters now go into the calculation process to give us the degree C value. So when we ask for a get temperature reading, it's already been computed correctly based on all the parameters and the calibration values that we have stored inside. So the architecture is exactly the same as we've seen. So we've still got the application layer talking to all the different libraries and then the HAL below. It's still using the IEEE protocol for um, requests and indications between the Mac user layer and the Mac layer itself. We're still using the layer management entities and the common port services to do the communications between joining and transmitting data. When we get these requests in our software, this all links back to the callback routines for either transmit data or receive data. And that's all controlled by our finite state machine where we will normally sit in the sleep and send modes and 
every time we send a message, we will transition between these two modes. So this means the files that we're still using are main.c and laura.c, and they are communicating with the lauramac.c. So the implementation stays the same, so we're still initializing the laura.c in exactly the same way. We're still using the two callback routines, even though the code inside these callback routines has now changed. We've still got the get device state available to us, so that feature is still there in the laura.c. And we're still using a time server, so we're still initializing a timer, setting a value, and then starting one of the timers to control our transmit LED. The new features we're using now are this hardware get temperature level. So we're now calling this uh, specific routine to um, provide us with the degree C temperature value. And as we're still doing development work, we're not using the low power UART, we're still on the main UART, which means we're still at 115200 board so that we um, need to make sure our termite terminal window is set to the correct board rate for us to see the information being passed between our device and the LoRa gateway. So how does it all work? Well, it works pretty much in the same way as it did on the past example. So the flow of the information is still traveling in the same way and our flow diagram here is exactly the same as before. So the procedure hasn't changed. It's just what we're doing in our LoRa TX data and LoRa RX data that are going to be different compared to our previous hands-on that we ran. So let's go straight into the coding then. So we need to go into our projects this time for the end node temperature sensor. So if we go back to our Kyle environment, and I want to close the previous project, so it's project, close project, and now if I go into our Laura end node temperature sensor into the MDK arm and launch the project file again. Kyle reopens. If I now go and find my main.c we can then start adding our code. So, so this time we need to add our buffer size to be 4 because our temperature sensor now can potentially go over 100 degrees so that means we need three digits plus the return character so we need to increase that to 4 and to make it more of a realistic application we're now going to set our duty cycle to be 45 seconds. So remember the random number features will still get added later, so we'll be somewhere between 45 and 90 seconds for our transmissions. So we need to add these two lines to our code first. These need to go in at line number 72. There we go. So that adds our two lines for those variables. Then we need to initialize our timers, so for our timer events. So this is exactly as we did in the previous example. So they need to be 
added to the software. So we've got line number 97, I'll place mine. Then, as I said, we need to put our random effect in to make sure that we're not having multiple nodes transmitting at the same time. So that needs to go into user code begin and end section number one. Just like we did on the previous example, we need to make sure that our default data rate is set to a value of 5, which means we have a spreading factor of 7. Uh, by default, it should always be set to 0. So if we go and find that regioneu.h file again in our code, to our regions file and it's region EU 868 and it's there region EU 868.h so our default data rate there is set to 5 so that's okay, that's already on five. Now we need to put our transmit data callback routine in place. So this goes in user code section number three, and this is now going to prepare the temperature information that we're receiving from the get temperature level uh, hardware subroutine into the format so that we can load it into our payload down here at the bottom. So we need to take all of that code and place it into user code begin and end section number three. Remember, if you're copying and pasting from the PowerPoint, you will know to delete the uh, end of line uh, limiter that was added in the PowerPoint slide. Then we need to sort out our LoRa RX data subroutine. So this is pretty much structured exactly the same as what we had in the number guessing game, apart from the text in the printf statements that will appear in our terminal window have been changed. So again, this needs to be copied into the user code begin and end number four. Finally, don't forget our uh, timer event routine to switch off our LED. 
So, so we need to paste that into the section just below or just after user code end number four. And before we do our build, we need to make sure that the duty cycle restrictions in our laura.c file are set to false. Remember, for a real life application, you need to leave that as true. It's already set to false in my software, so I can now go project and build. While my code is building there, inside our application server now, rather than having our random number in our compare value, I have now replaced this with a temperature threshold. So when we look at our debug, we'll see our incoming temperatures and then our outbound messages to either tell us to increase the temperature, decrease the temperature, or to let you know that we are at the correct temperature. So we'll see that uh, going on on the debug screen shortly. Uh, so I've got zero errors, so I can now program my target board, so I'll download. I'll now have to wait for the array cycle to go through. So there we go, our device is now being reprogrammed. I go back to my terminal window, you can see that we've done the over the air version, we've done the join process, and we've now sent out our first temperature reading, which is 27 degrees, and temperature is now too high. If I place that board nearer to part of my laptop that's generating a lot more heat you should see my temperature increase quite significantly so there we go so it's already jumped up to 31 degrees and it will probably jump up uh, a little more there we go 34 degrees So you can see the information going through and if we now look at the webcam that's monitoring my gateway laptop when it refocuses you should see the various temperatures coming in of 34 degrees 35 degrees and now I believe it is on my screen oh, it's 38 degrees now I'm transmitting so you can now see 38 degrees coming in 39 degrees so you can see there that the information is scrolling through uh, as it would in a real-life application as my laptop is working quite hard at the moment generating uh, the web live webcam on such a high resolution the uh, exhaust fan of my laptop is actually getting quite warm so if I will move my board away again to somewhere that's a little cooler in the room you should see the temperature drop down every now and then you will see that there's another temperature reading coming in 
So you can see there, just near the top of the screen on the left hand side, there's a 24 degrees. That's from a remote temperature sensor somewhere else in the room. Uh, so you should now hopefully see my normal board drop down to around 24 degrees. Um, now it's no longer sat next to my laptop exhaust fan. You can see it's slowly dropping down now, the value. So this is more like what you would have in a real life application where you're sending different temperature readings to monitor what's going on around either building management or um, refrigeration units, things like that.